Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such a pleasure to be able to speak to you today, Dominic. Um, maybe you could begin with a really brief introduction to this incredible film, The Night of the Twelfth. What can people expect um, when they watch it? What can people expect when they watch it? Uh, <laughs> a good film, I hope. Um, well, it's um, it's a, a, a crime story. It's a, a story about a police investigation um triggered off by the murder of a young woman and uh it depicts uh well how this group of uh, investigators work and uh how they try to resolve this this case and how it leads them to question themselves about their own work and also about their uh, masculinity in a, in a way because they're confronted with uh, male violence towards women and yes so basically in a nutshell that's what the film is about and I found it fascinating kind of reading about kind of the the, the backstory and, and, and this non-fiction book which I think was a sort of sprawling 500 page uh, non-fiction work um, but of course you've kind of focused in on one particular case so maybe you just talk us through a little bit um, how you first came across that book and what it was that inspired you to make a film about that particular case. Um, well I came across that book actually more or less by accident I mean you know when you browse through libraries or bookshops or whatever and so I, I stumbled across it and I I was curious to read it because uh it doesn't happen that often that an author here it's a, a woman Pauline Guénard uh, spends one year uh, within uh, a, a crime unit of the the police and then describes the the work from inside and uh, the, the the everyday uh, work and life of those uh, investigators. So I was uh, curious to to read that, and then uh, and so she talks about many different um, investigation uh, investigations, and the last one she describes is the one that we uh, we used for the the film, and what I liked particularly about that one was that it described how one of the investigators, Johan, uh, gets obsessed uh, with this uh, particular case and how it haunts him. And uh, especially because he he's not able to solve it. And so I found very interesting to observe what it does to investigators when they cannot solve uh, a crime because usually of course the rule of the game with a police or crime story is that you have the crime at the beginning and then the resolution and the criminal at the end and here it's not the case and so i wanted to to observe or the, the, the i mean the book does it already but that's what interested me how, what kind of frustration or anger or deception uh this Produces uh, when when uh, an investigator cannot resolve a case, and you've got an absolutely phenomenal cast, um, and it feels like the it, it was very in, crucial to get that right because um, the, the way the characterizations work, there's lots of contrasts. So in particular, your your, your um, two actors that play Johan and Marceau um a kind of uh, two very different types of people you know one much more quiet than reserved and the other one kind of you know i think at some point he's called a, a bit of a, a bit sentimental or a romantic and kind of flies off the handle um, and they both play that so well but even the supporting cast as well i think you um you'd spent time in a in a, a grenoble police station and you'd really thought about how that group dynamic was going to have had to work really well with your with your supporting cast so maybe you can talk that through for us um Yes, I mean, in every film, the casting is is important, of course. Uh, but here, it's true that there was a special challenge because there was this, on one hand, this group of investigators. And when I did spend a, a week at the police, at uh, the Grenoble a crime unit, I could see how important that that group was, because for the investigators, it's like a, a second or sometimes even like the, their first uh, family. So it's a uh, it's what happens within that is is important and uh and uh it helps them to um 
to support all that you know the the the, the violence they are confronted uh, with and so we had to get that right and we we saw with my casting directors really a, a lot of candidates for all the the parts and then uh because it was important not only to to um that each individual choice should be right but that the that the group uh, should should work uh, as well so we spent a lot of time on a time of time on that and then also there are a lot of other parts like the different suspects who often exist only in one scene and so it was important that in only one scene uh, they should um be portray a, a, a real character which the the the, the viewer can can grasp uh immediately so that was uh that was uh an, another challenge and of course you were talking about the two main uh characters and as you said they are very contrasted and uh uh Johan is is uh someone who doesn't obviously doesn't like to to talk about himself or about his feelings and who seems to be entirely dedicated to his work he has no family life he lives alone in a, a small uh, apartment and he 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 knows that the the respect of the police procedure is really important but you feel also that for him it's a way to to control his emotions it's, it's not that he doesn't have any uh, but uh, Marceau is his partner uh the, the 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 emotions and just spill out and uh, also because because he's older and so he's been confronted with all that his work much longer and and you feel that he's uh unhappy uh in in his work and that he has a hard time to to hold all this uh anger or this hate uh, that has accumulated to hold that back and so it just spills over and uh and johan uh yeah tries to control all that so it's true that they're quite different mm. and the other point of contrast and, and of course it emerges as one of the key threads through the film is the fact that it's so male dominated um and that's on the side of you know uh the suspects and, and where the crimes are being committed and the the police are investigating and then at certain moments, there are these female characters that kind of pierce that. Um, and they always seem very pivotal moments. And then of course we have Clara, that character, which kind of overshadows um, the whole story. Right. So, so how was that important? And in what way did you want to kind of explore this idea that why is it um, men that are investigating men the majority of the time? Uh, well, it's a fact. Uh, I mean, even if in TV shows you do see a lot of uh, women investigators, but the truth is that it doesn't happen that often. And uh, what I saw in, in Grenoble at the crime unit is that there were only men. And uh, and so it's true that it, in, in the film at one point, one of the uh, female characters, a young police officer, questions that and says it's kind of strange that the the violence is committed by men and then it's other men who investigate on that violence and where's the woman in that is she just the victim or or what and so the the, the film um questions that i mean it doesn't it doesn't mean that men necessarily do their job badly but the collab that the collaboration with women could maybe <laughs> help them as well even if they're in their in their way of dealing with their job because what you feel what, what you can see is that in a, in a group of men um men have all i have the impression a difficult time to to confide into their, their colleagues and because they're they're afraid that it might be a sign of weakness and they have to show strength and um and so they hold everything back or or they try to get rid of it by making jokes or or whatever but never to talk about their really uh, intimate feelings and so it's it's not an accident if in the film uh you are the only one who when he the, the only time when he confides in someone it's uh when he's facing the judge who is a woman and he would never do that uh with a colleague for instance and i i i i thought that was uh 
interesting to to explore you know in terms of uh, of, of uh, relations between uh, men and women and also uh, ultimately what makes uh, Johan evolve throughout the the film and and see things maybe a bit differently is uh, due to his um, uh, dialogues with the it's true that there are very few women in the film, but the ones that are there are very important in what they um, bring to to him and what they and what, how they make him uh, make progress in you know in his questions and his questionings. And something else that's very striking about the film is kind of the stylistic choices you've made, um, and it seems very exacting and precise. I mean, you start with a very sort of bold opening and like, you know, that quite shocking image uh, of, of how the girl was killed. Um, but actually, the, a lot of it, is, it then goes on to be very restrained. Um, so maybe you could just talk a bit about, you know, some of the, the like the filters that you chose to use and the way you shot it. And then these other kind of striking images that come throughout, um, you know, or him like cycling around the velodrome, reflecting that idea that he's kind of trapped on this hamster wheel going around in circles. So you can just talk a bit about the stylistic choices. Uh, yes, I mean, you're right in saying that uh, my style is, is quite restrained. I'm always a bit suspicious of when camera moves around all the time to to uh, convey the sense of urgency. And I, I think... Uh, when when the the yeah the way you shoot things is more restrained you pay it allows you or the, the viewer to to pay much more attention to a lot of of details and also to what's going on in the to the ter inner turmoils of the of the character so i i don't think uh it's useful to overstress that by a uh, chaotic <laughs> Uh, camera uh, movement and uh, and but uh, yeah on, on one hand what I was uh, what was important to me was that the film should be very documented I mean on the police work and which it is but I never saw it as a documentary but as a as a fiction and as a fiction I I what I like in fiction is also almost uh, mental side of, 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 of things that you can uh, explore. So there are things in the film that are also quite striking visually. I mean, for instance, the, the scene when uh, Johan is in his bed and suddenly the, the faces of the, of the suspects uh, superimpose on his own face and, and things like that that, are, that you can only do in, in film and that are typical of cinematograph graphic language so I, I try to to use those and in terms of what people can take away from watching the film I mean it's so enthralling and compelling um and and I, I love the fact that yeah on the face of it, it can seem kind of you know police work procedural but you know through it, it's you know talking about that existential anxiety he's suffering and these ideas of you know male violent violence and, and misogyny yet there's also a feeling of optimism because like you said he goes on this journey um and actually even if it's not about necessarily getting to an answer um he's discovering something ab about himself and about the world throughout the film Yes, that, that's uh, correct. And uh, that's what we were looking for with my co-writer, because um, uh, some people could say, OK, we don't have the criminal at the end, so there's no ending to the, the film or no resolution or whatever, which is not true, because the, the, um, the resolution uh, is in uh, the, the main character's uh, evolution and journey and he goes from one point A to a point B, and and what we wanted to say through his this journey was that he he understands the importance of not giving up of of that giving up is not an option, even if the world is a bit fucked up and <laughs> and even if you you could be tempted to to abandon and uh and and he understands and especially through his discussions with the uh, uh women in the film that it's important not to give up and to try to continue even if there's no guarantee of success or of solving uh the 
the the crime and this is something i strongly believe in also in you know in 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 everyday life and in our world that that might not uh, lead to a lot of optimism but i think it's it's important to yes not to not to yeah not to give up mm -hmm. I'm out of time, and I didn't even get to mention, you know, the fact that it absolutely swept the board at um, the Césars in, in in France, which must have just felt, um, and I know it's not the reason, you know, often people go into filmmaking, but it must have felt incredible to, that, that, that the film had really connected with people in that way. Uh, yes, I mean, the Césars are, are nice recognition, uh, but of course, the, the most important thing, as you say, is to connect with the public, and that had already happened before because the, the the film had a quite long career actually it's still going on because it's still being shown in in uh uh movie theaters although it's also already available on, on blu-ray dvd vod uh whatever and that's really um very rewarding because nowadays unfortunately a lot of films get released and then two weeks later they're nowhere to be seen anymore and we we could really feel that, yeah, that the film connected with the audience. And also what I was particularly happy about was that we we could see that as the career of the film uh, went on, that the, the audience was getting younger and younger and that it that appealed also to a lot of uh, young people. And actually one of the Césars we got, I mean, which was not during the ceremony, ceremony, but afterwards was what they call the the high school César. So it's a real César, but uh, awarded by uh, 2000 uh, students from, from high school. And so we were very happy about that, that the, the film could also talk to young people. Mm, absolutely. Well, I'm out of time. Thank you so much for sharing all that with me. I can't wait for everyone else in the UK to have a chance to see your film. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.